Good morning to all of you students. In our last lecture, we had started the topic sense organ. Okay, and we had also studied about some receptors. The eye part and the parts of eye were being complete by us in the last lecture. Okay, so today the topic which we are going to start is ear. Students, ear consists of three parts: the outer, middle, and the inner ear. Means the inner is divided into three parts: the outer ear, the middle ear, and the inner ear. The pinna of the outer ear collect the sound waves. See, students, this structure of ear is known as pinna. Okay, it is a cartilaginous structure. Means no bone. is present inside the pinna only the cartilage present inside the pinna and what is the difference between cartilage and bone students cartilage are very soft and flexible in comparison to bones cartilage is also a uh, part of skeleton system okay now after that outer ear collect sound waves it is a cartilaginous structure the auditory canal the ear canal see students this is auditory canal the auditory canal is the canal through which sound waves travel okay inside the ear and the auditory canal and pinna region forms the outer ear okay then the middle ear middle ear comprises of three bones okay malus here you can see malus incus and stapes here you can see the three bones malus incus and stapes these are also commonly known as hammer anvil and stipum respectively okay 1 2 and 3 these three bones comes inside the middle ear okay and the outer ear and the middle ear is divided by a drum like structure known as ear drum the ear drum is also known as tympanic membrane it is not given in your book students but i am telling to you that the ear drum is also known as tympanic membrane the tympanic membrane divide the outer ear to middle ear okay after that the inner ear inner ear contain cloaca see students inside this that sound travels okay cloaca which fluid fill spiral structure inside this spiral structure fluid is filled the fluid vibrates due to the sound wave and when sound wave come the fluid inside the cloaca gets vibrated okay the receptor in the inner ear transmit this sound message and the receptor which is present i had already told all of you that different different stimulus have different different stimulus sorry different different stimulus have different different receptor so for sound stimulus the ear is receptor and which part the inner part okay attached to the cloaca and also the th three semi circular canal these three are the semi circular canal which is arises from this cloaca like structure inside this the the sound message transfer inside our ear and here you can see students the cream color structure auditory nerves these nerves goes inside our brain okay so this is the structure of our ear okay now nose the receptor of smell okay students let's uh, let's uh, take a brief summary okay the eyes are receptor for light okay the ear are receptor for sound like in that way only the nose are receptor for smell okay now start up the receptor for smell lie in the nasal epithelium okay epithelium means the lining okay students the lining inside the uh, organ you can say or the gland you can say these are sensitive to different odors what is the meaning of odor students odor means smell they are different they are sensitive to different smell the olfactory nerves carries the message of the smell to the sensory region now the nerves present inside the nasal passage you can say olfactory nerve 
which send the message of what smell okay in the cerebrum of brain and which part of the brain cerebrum part of the brain here you can say students the direction of inhalation means this this is the structure of nose and this is the structure of nostril the opening of nose here you can see the uh, air is getting inside and here is the olfactory nerves and this olfactory nerves are giving the message to brain and which part of the brain the cerebrum part of the brain okay students now <coughs> the next topic is tongue tongue the receptor for taste lie on the taste bud on the tongue means like eyes were responsible for light nose were responsible for smell ear was responsible for sound like in that way only the tongue is responsible for taste there are four primary kinds of taste sweet salty bitter and sour sweet means you know students sweet salty means which contain salt bitter means which is very hard in taste and sour means which is like very tough in taste here you can see the tongue okay this is the tongue and this is the taste bud present inside our tongue okay here you can see student here it is written sensory hairs <coughs> so what is the function of sensory hair student sensory hairs detect the stimulus of taste and here you can see nerve fibers these nerve fiber take that taste of the message of taste to the brain or central nervous system okay students now the last sense organ is skin receptor for detecting the sensation of touch pain cold heat pressure lie in our in the skin lie on the skin okay students now the skin which is our last sense organ is the receptor for touch okay the touch the pain the cold heat pressure everything we can feel with our skin why because our skin is receptor for touch okay the skin also contains sweat gland we secrete sweat and the sweat gland present inside our skin okay the oil glands also known as sebaceous gland and the hair follicle see students this this is the structure of the layer of our skin here you can see inside that the hair follicle is present the oil gland is present the sweat gland is present the function of oil gland is to produce sebum okay the function of sweat gland is to produce sweat the hair follicle is responsible for the protection of our skin okay these are present in dermal layer of the skin dermis lie below the epidermis here you can see students there are two layer you can see very properly the upper one is the thinner one and dark pink in color this is the epidermal layer okay and the lower one the light pink one is dermal layer so you can see inside the dermal layer the hair follicle the sebaceous gland the sweat glands are present okay now this is the structure of your skin the cross section of skin means students the ts of skin okay ts means when you cut a part of skin you can see these layers okay now care of sense organ how you can take care of your sense organ the sense organ should be take care of the skin outer ear tongue etc should be keep clean okay you should always keep clean your sense organs okay the eye should not be strained we should read in adequate light okay the eye muscle should be exercise the eye wall should be rotated to maintain the good eye sight sharp object should be inserted into the ear okay students means we should take cares of our sense organ as you can see with the different kinds of stimulus our sense organ are working as a receptor so we should take care of our sense organ a diet rich in vitamin a vitamin c is beneficial for good eyesight 
which means students the vitamin c and vitamin a is good for our eye so we should take care that we can take food which contain vitamin a and vitamin c for our healthy eyes okay in case of any distress to sense organ and ophthalmologist and ent specialist or dermatologist should be consulted accordingly so students if any of problem you are facing in your any of your sense organ you should consult to the doctor which is a specialist in that field okay like if you are having any problem in your mouth region you go for dentist if you are having any problem in your skin you go to dermatologist respectively okay now the endocrine system students we will study this topic in our next lecture okay here i am giving just a introduction about this topic students in our whole body there are two types of gland one is exocrine and the second one is endocrine here you are going to study endocrine system why because endocrine system contain endocrine glands okay endocrine glands are those glands which does not contain any kind of duct okay that's why they are known as ductless gland so students if any organ or gland containing duct then that gland should secrete their product into the targeted organ or the targeted cell but if the gland is not having any duct it will secrete its product inside the blood that's why the secretion of endocrine glands are known as hormones okay here you can see the endocrine glands are also known as ductless gland they secrete hormone that are directly poured into the blood see students the thing what that was i would i was telling to all of you okay so this we will study in our next lecture okay if you are having any doubt in any topic message me okay bye